everybody, and welcome to The Void, a show dedicated to filling the void between being an employee and becoming self-employed. Most people refer to starting your own company as taking the leap, as if they are blindly jumping off a cliff and into the unknown. This show is here to help you understand that it doesn't have to be that way. As always, if you like what you're hearing on the show, please do us a favor and help share the void with somebody else who might also be wanting to start their own company. We saw an opportunity to help others understand that self-employment is well within your reach, and just as our businesses have grown organically and by word of mouth, we want this show to grow the same way. So if you see somebody asking questions about starting their own service-based business, please do us a favor and send them a link to the show. I'm your host, Mitch Smedley, and with me as always is David Hilton. Thought you was going to botch that opening there yeah, for a second. Yeah, well, you know. You got it? You <laughs> I'm, okay? I'm good. You all right? I'm good. <laughs> little, little protein shake stuck in the back of the throat. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm always sure. been a long day. It's a... Uh, I'm sure that's what it is. <gasps> well, so... <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, springtime's almost here, dude. It's close. It's getting warmer. Mm-hmm. A few more weeks. Layla started... This is this is going to sound insane. They start their spring soccer schedule, mm-hmm. and they have three practices a week. That'll be fun. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And for all of you people that think we're like crazy sports parents, you will do good. I ask her every session. I'm like, hey, are you sure you still – because I'm exhausted, right? Jenny's right. like, oh, soccer practice again. No. Ugh. She's like, yeah, I want to go. I want to go. I want to go see my friends. I want to play. I want to – okay. So we do it. <laughs> But we're not the crazy, you know, you know what, sign your kid up for it. Man, it's just, it's so exhausting. You know what that is, right? Why, what is? She's an only child. Yeah, that is. That That's got to be it. You're 100% right. Because my kids like, are she's like. She's tired of hearing me. She's yeah. like, Dad, no, I want to see my friends. You're an idiot. <laughs> you're a complete jackass. I'm tired of talking to the chickens, Dad. <laughs> yeah, that ain't a, shit. I can't. It's been winter. She won't go out there in the winter. Yeah. So the chickens that were for quote unquote Layla, yeah, those those are those are dad's chickens in the winter. Yeah. So yeah, that's been a whole lot of fun too. I bet they taste good. Oh, they're dad's chickens. You can eat them. Fucking shit. Oh, I'm <laughs> tired of looking at them. Oh, that's why I'm not a dad because if I had a daughter, I'd be like, you go out there and play. I'm gonna go sleep in the car. That's not how it works, dude. Just come wake me up. <laughs> People without kids say that stuff, and then yep. it, they're like, it just completely changes your whole life. You're like, oh shit. Yeah. It's no longer your time. Now you're sitting on the bleachers, hanging on the fence. Oh man, that's why I'm notes. sneaking in flasks. Just <laughs> oh yeah. How many soccer games you watched today? Twenty seven. Yeah, you wonder why Yeti <laughs> cups have gotten so popular. It's not because they work cool. It's because they hide alcohol well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps that ice cold with that vodka in there. It keeps them nice yeah. and ready to go. I'll last you all day. Pro tip for anybody who has to have a <clears throat> Zoom meeting: if you blow on your coffee mug, they'll think your vodka is coffee. Oh, that's a good point. I never thought about that. <laughs> I'm just going to tell the guys in the arm zoom calls and be like, hey, guys, I mean, it's late. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. I'm like eight deep here. You yeah. know, that just that just like shows your approaches. Mitch is blowing. And Dave's like, hey, y'all, this is vodka. This, this, yeah. is, this is what it is. <laughs> that is our that's our like, personality. Well, it's different when you're running the zoom call versus when you're like an employee. Yeah, that's right. That's 100 percent true. <laughs> that's 100 percent true. It's apple juice. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Right. It's only been two days. How's your week? Been OK. Uh, busy. So today, ironically, we're going to talk about it here on one of our topics. Uh, today, I submitted the largest bid for our company we've ever done, a bid that is equal to half of our total revenue for last year. But it's not a one lump bid. It's not a single project. It's we'll a talk bunch about of, it. It's a bunch of small projects. We'll talk about it. Yeah. So just running your ass off, huh? Yeah. And we were at a golf course today doing some plumbing work, and it's nice and warm out today, so you hear all the... Oh man! All the sounds of the golf, golf course. I'm ready Old to play. Man. I I didn't play a lot last year. The only time I went last year, I went with my brother once, and then we went to that tournament. Yeah, and that was it. I'm I'm thinking about getting my boys into it. So they don't like team sports. So I'm trying to find something where we can like do every week to hang out with yeah. the boys. And so I'm thinking we might have <clears> to do like me and the boys at golf every week you know what so Layla and I play in the yard all the time and then I started taking her to the top golf right and they have those kids games on there oh yeah that they can do dude she ate it up her and I went that I think we talked about on this podcast one time we went for three and a half hours just the two of us like my hands hurt yeah I was like I I was tired of playing golf she's like dad can we stay $250 oh shit yeah I spent like $300 (laughs) I was like oh my god you gotta go during their their off peak it's like in the, it's early though, early in the morning because the only guys in there are old guys, right? Yep. No yep. one's going in to drink beer. 
you know, you feel like a loser then. You got to wait till two to at least, you know, if you're going to go in and drink beer. So I took, I it was, took it's our a lot boys of fun. and they each brought a friend. Like, I think it was last year. And when we went to Top Golf and they were playing the, uh, oh, what's the game where you it's sling? Angry Birds. Angry Birds. Yeah, yeah they, they, they were Angry playing Birds Angry Birds. Games. And Grant couldn't swing a club to save his life. So he just started throwing the balls. <laughs> and he actually did fairly well at the Angry Birds game just by throwing them by, by of, his hand. Of course he can't hit them. Mason, as goofy and gangly as that kid is, he's pretty damn good with a golf club. Well, he, I'm kind of amazed. D- you know what we should probably do is not let you teach him? I'm not. No. So this is the thing. Like, should, I want to go. I'm not teaching him shit. I don't want to teach them anything. I don't want to say this is a, a challenge, a contest. I, it's literally me and my I'm going to just teach him how to swing. The club. Because I've <laughs> I don't even want to like they'll figure it out on their own. I just want to go hang out. Oh, uh, just to do something fun. Like like literally the goal is to like get them to where they're better than me. But well, they, <laughs> which doesn't that's, take too much. That's five minutes of training. <laughs> yeah. You're done. Just showing up is better. Yeah. This yeah. isn't that bad, but someday like if he has so if he drinks two beers, he's okay. If yeah. he drinks three beers, You'll be lucky if the ball gets ten feet off the ground. Yeah, if I can stay, <laughs> if I can stay at a two beer buzz, I am a really good golf player. He's a burden if he's had three beers and you're golfing uh, with him. That's exactly that's the best that, word for it. That at three tournament beers. last year, I think I had six or eight beers and we I lost of, eighteen balls. Oh that my day. god, we had a lot it was of fun a, though. It was a bad day. It was, no, it wasn't. It was a great that was a day. Great day. Bad it day was a day. lot of fun. Bad day for a golf ball. <laughs> like, I can see Dave being like, now you fun. have to like take care of Mitch. Like, no, no, you don't have to take care of Mitch. But you'll never see me that. He does a lot. If he's been drinking and then we play golf, he's doing a lot of dropping his partner off and then going to look for the ball. Yeah. Because mm. his ball is somewhere in an undisclosed location. He's creating his own game. Yeah, exactly. It's two you games know what? I'm one. Gonna, I'm going to hit that tree first, and then I'm going to be in that bunker, and then I'm going to hit that tree. And then six I'll dolphins. I'll see you in the fairway. I don't even get drunk enough to slur my words. And then six dolphins and frisbee no, later. It's funner if I say it that way. I get drunk enough More to... <laughs> I get drunk enough to unclip the bag. This episode is brought to you by Field Pulse, the official field service management software provider of The Void. Field Pulse allows you to organize your customers, your employees, your jobs, and your revenue with ease. Field Pulse is the perfect option no matter if you're a business of one or 100, and their plans start at just $99 a month. Check out the link to Field Pulse in the description of this show. Joey. Bag tie on the back of it. <laughs> show Ossifer. So. What do you want to talk about today, dude? All right. As always, three topics. What are they? Topic number one has to do with the pussification of America. Oh, I wrote down wussification. I was trying to be politically correct. Well, so my son went to the principal's office today for calling a kid a pussy. So we're just going to call it what it is. It's you know the what? Let's all pretend who it was. It was Grant. Yeah. Of yeah, course totally. it was Grant. Some kid said he was going to kick his ass, and he said, no, you won't. You're a pussy. <laughs> and he went to the office. And so he comes home all upset, and he knows our rule. That yeah. he's, we don't get him in trouble at home. If he's in trouble at school, we let the school handle it. So that's but the kid who threatened it, violence. Honest, that trouble. probably works right now. But if he's on the trajectory he's on, that's not going to work. Uh, he's not on a bad trajectory. He's just. I didn't he, say bad trajectory. I, he, yeah, he just he's, 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 that curve could start to rise at any given day. Yeah. So, so, so the thing is, though, like next year in middle school, you can call a kid a pussy and they don't care. Oh, you're probably right. They don't get into like, no, so like Mason says that that happens all the time and nobody gets in trouble. It's for because anything. the teachers are more worried about a kid getting stabbed. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's not drugs. that it's not any worse. Yeah. It's that they have to pick their battles. It's yeah. like the cop that pulls a guy over and he's got like, you know, a yeah. quarterback and they're like, so, uh, well, I'm just throwing, oh, look, man, I got, I past two crack houses on the way here. Right. I'm letting you go. Quit fucking up. Right. You know, and it lets him go. So the kid's got his mom, my wife, which her favorite word is the F word. Uh, um, Doc, so that's probably true. Right. Yeah. Uh, me, I'm true. a cusser. He's got an older brother who can get away with that stuff in his school. So like he doesn't stand a chance to not get it. First off, Mason's going to be an angel. I think. I don't know. He's going to be like you and just hide it and not get caught. He's pretty good about like encouraging bad behavior, knowing he won't be in the middle of it, but he's like the instigator. Mm-hmm. That so. sounds really familiar. Like I can't remember. Who, well, I, I, don't, I don't know who would be that one. Hey, <laughs> you should run across <laughs> That's the road. me. Yeah. So uh, we got three topics today. Uh, so topic that one. one is the pussification of America. 
Topic two is why you should always do amazing work. And topic three, apparently I brain farted when I wrote it down. Wanting to quit. It's, you want wanting to quit, to quit all the time. All I wrote down was one thing. He did. <laughs> Mitch, you know what I love about Mitch? This is, this is a great example. Mitch, tell, I tell him all the time he has ADHD. He's That's like, no, I quit. no, I don't. No, I don't. I don't have ADHD. No, I'm focused. He literally wrote down one word of a sentence and then <laughs> oh, no. jumped to something else like a fucking squirrel. I know he's HD squirrel. because Dave is like, you don't teach him in the middle. I'm not going to teach him this. I'm going to teach him that. And Dave's like, I was just saying, teach him how to swing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love you, Mitch. Yeah. You've been kind of caught in the, in the uh, wood chipper today. T- today yeah. was Mitch in the crossfires. <laughs> yeah. All day today. <laughs> I'm just waiting like I think the I'm just waiting for like the day I come to a podcast and we go, Oh, our third topic is we're actually gonna be terminating Austin's relationship. <laughs> yeah. It's like the third topic today is we're gonna sur- fire Austin live on the air. It's a surprise <laughs> topic for Austin at the end of the show. We get to it. this is like Austin, fuck off, you're fired. Yeah. You don't want actually you don't want that. No, we don't. No. So you I just keep that recording. Publicity. Just let me know when you're finished, I'll come. come <laughs> So topic one, the pussification of America. We've had two sporting events in the local news and national news that uh, have caught quite a bit of heat. So the Chiefs last Wednesday had their world uh, championship Super Bowl parade here in Kansas City. I did not go, but it was awesome. Uh, Yeah. They've been replaying it on TV for like three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks since last Wednesday. Three, yeah. <laughs> They've been replaying it for. Look, people, I'm really tired, and I've I just chugged two beers, so my brain is like, <laughs> yeah, not functioning. Tomorrow correctly. was such a good day. So, Shut up, Austin. <laughs> uh, three years ago, when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, um, it was COVID. It, it was right the, before COVID. It was right before COVID. Yeah. Right. So the, their Super Bowl parade was a unbeknownst super spreader, right? And <laughs> like 800,000 people show up. Um, you got a team that just won the Super Bowl for the first time in 50 years. And, um, uh, you know, they, they celebrated. They had fun. Bud Light sponsored the thing. And oh, yeah. they all had solo cups. Everybody was right? drinking, like having fun. As the parade was going by, people were throwing beers from the streets to the buses. And the guy, the players were catching them and drinking them and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Right. And so then the parade. And vice versa, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Plenty of beer was drank in the crowd for sure. Oh yeah. So then the parade gets to the uh, the rally point, the end of the parade, and the guys are talking to the crowd. You know, Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and all these guys talking are talking about this to the year crowd. Or three years ago, both years. Okay. Uh, mm. And um, you know, it's obvious that they're enjoying their celebration, right? They're lubricated. Three years ago, they were over lubricated. Um, last or this year, they were fine. Like, there was one Chiefs player who you didn't even see on TV. You saw pictures of him later had to get escorted into an Uber via wheelchair because (laughs) he was not able to stand. Um, What a way. Yeah. But, That'd be awesome if we went out drinking and he was like, guys, let's sh- show me how to do some drinking. Yeah. So <laughs> carrying Austin out of there. The uh, KC star started an article that's now caused some national attention, which the KC star is like the, in, woke, the, the most woke. It's the Kansas City. City yeah. It's the Kansas it's City awful. newspaper. Yeah. But they're, they're, they're like dying. Like all newspapers are dying. Right. Yeah. Who, who reads newspapers anymore? The Nobody. falling star. Yeah. As everyone calls it. So uh, they wrote an article talking about how some fans are outraged that the Chiefs players were drinking in public and uh, some of them appeared to be possibly overserved and all of this stuff. And it's, it's just like, come on. Like, literally, it's 80,000 people getting drunk in a stadium that pays for all of this to happen. Right. And and what's funny is the people that are getting outraged about it, like, they're the same people that are drinking a bottle of wine every night yeah, in the comfort of their own home in front of their children. But then they're trying to say, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey is a bad influence on my child. Meanwhile... Their mm-hmm. husband took yeah, but, their yeah. child to a Chiefs game, yeah, and got plastered yeah. in front of their child. You know what? But I Mahomes is the problem. Yeah, I don't understand. Oh, like all these parades happen and people get arrested and this and that. Kansas City has had three now, three. Yeah, yeah. Since so the Royals won the World Series in fifteen, there were no 
crazy cars on fire arrest yeah. cars on fire city being burned down yep. everyone literally had what i w- would call a very good adult time yeah you know with nothing crazy happening mm-hmm. and still somebody's got to be a crybaby bitch at the star and be like well this just isn't how it's supposed to be yeah no you okay, come yeah. on what when happened it, to the good old days when you could go to a car show and now you can't even have an open container outside. You go to a car show and drink, a, you know, have a beer and look at some cars and go. I just don't understand why people refuse to have fun or let anyone live anymore. It just, I want to choke them. I seem like, to remember just, two young men that went to a car show with some open containers. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> until you did. So, so Dave and I were like. So first off, stop. <laughs> we were under 21, so we got in trouble. It's different. I was just talking about like old guys going out drinking some beers. I completely forgot about that. We're in a Hooters parking lot at a, like a car show. <laughs> I forgot it was Hooters. I got like a 30 pack of beer in the trunk of my 65 Mustang. <laughs> and this kid that looks half our age. We're under 21. This kid that looks half our age asks for a beer. They're asked if we had beer, and we're like, yeah. And then he flips out this badge and writes us no. tickets for minors in possession. And yeah. we had to pour out all 30 of the beers, and the whole freaking parking lot was like booing this cop yeah. the whole time. Yeah, they're time. like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> like, it's not like we were creating a ruckus. We were no. there to look at the cars. Yeah. So like us and I don't remember, there were five or six of us. We're like, hey, let's go up here. Yeah. We'll just take some beers, and we'll drink some beers, and we'll... You know, the hang out. pack wasn't for the car show. It was for later on that night. But yeah, but we just had a few in it. Yeah, and for for us to get a thirty pack back then, it was a chore. Yeah, it was like I could just go in and buy a beer. You either had to, you either had to run in and steal it. Yeah, allegedly. You had to have a connection. Or, yeah, or have a connection to get beer. So yeah. I mean, that ruined like two weeks of our lives <laughs> when back I, then. When, when I used to work at Quit Trip, I in the middle of the night, like two in the morning, some guy came in, and like. He was mad that I didn't let him get beer, like his friend beer, because like he was getting it for them both. I'm like, I, I see you're buying beer for somebody else. Allison, just sell the fucking beer, dude. They're just kids having some beers. Yeah. Here's the Damn funny it. part. He gets mad at me. He runs off, steals a beer, and I look down. He left both his ID and his debit card on the counter. Oh, shit. I just swiped his debit card and charged him for yeah. it and just set him there and been like, if he comes back, I'll just yep. give it to Here him. Here it is. Here's your stuff, dude. And how they steal... I had someone try to steam me. It's like they'll have a cop back or in the parking lot. They'll have like some... 16 year old come up and try to be like yeah it sounds so obvious though like can i have a michelin or whatever <laughs> can I have, um, that's a tire <laughs> do you mean a, do you mean a Michelin? can, can i have Michelin? a firestone please uh you mean <laughs> keystone <laughs> yeah they'll come up and like, they sound so just like i did it's oh like oh my it's, god dude. most people ask like, can i have this you know yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. you. But it's just 16 ounce Bud Light. You know, it just gets to the back to the point of the wussification of America. Mm-hmm. Everyone's just got to be offended. Everyone's yeah. offended all the time. They're just looking for something to be offended by, yeah. so that they can complain about it. Do you people not have fucking jobs? Yeah, like and families and stuff to do. Yeah. Like, I can barely make it over here to do this podcast. Mm-hmm. Mitch texts me today. He's like, hey, by the way, we're starting at four. I'm like, oh, great. Great. I barely make it. Mm. And by barely make it, I mean 15 minutes late. Yeah. I, like, I just feel like no one has a focus or no one has a purpose or no one, like, has a desire to do anything other than just sit around and talk shit on people all the time. Well, what it is is you have... The, you have a few very loud voices, right? And look at where it's coming from. It's coming from the KC Star. Yeah. So the KC Star is dying, Showing and they are wins. desperate for clicks. <laughs> mm-hmm. So what's a what's a great thing that's going to get a ton of attention? We take Kansas City's most popular favorite person, and we criticize them. Yeah. Heaven forbid Patrick Mahomes have a beer. I mean, yeah. hell, the guy's an adult, a father of two. And he's, making 10 times more money than you'll ever make mm, in your life. And he's literally achieved the pinnacle achievement in that career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sorry. You're telling me that that you same... You go have a beer when you get paid on Friday, and you're getting mad that this guy has a beer when he wins the yeah. Super Bowl? Yeah, you're telling me at the end of the year at your Christmas party, after an entire year of hard work, you're not having a couple drinks with your buddies? Right. Uh, yeah. What are you doing? Like, yeah. I'm not for Stop. sure if, like what they're allowed, but I'm pretty for sure it's like... There are restrictions on like drinking alcohol, so it's like 
you kind of like bust your butt for like a whole year like oh, you working mean out them this. during the yeah they're on diets and gotta exercise this and just like now it's like okay now the, the season's over well, they can cut loose a little bit yeah. right? no matter if they're drinking throughout the season like this is a celebration mm. like the, like literally the purpose of the parade is to celebrate the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl mm. guys can't have a couple beers I know I mean it's that's, dumb dude that's sad it's like, so dumb another article which uh, I'm surprised you didn't hear about it which yeah he brought this up before the show I was like yeah. what so Tiger and Woods, I love golf Tiger Woods is under some heat. Uh, Tiger Woods is a uh, a low key major prankster and major heckler. <clears throat> and so I like Tiger Woods. He, he talks a lot of shit, and I like it. He is the <laughs> number one shit talker, but he does it quietly under the breath to where only the other guy on the tee box is going to hear it. Yeah. And um, a couple of days ago, he outdrove Justin Thomas, which was his playing partner. And so while they are walking to the balls. He hands Justin Thomas a tampon, <laughs> and it was caught on camera, and apparently there's a whole lot of people taking the choice, making the choice to be outraged by it. Yeah. And it's like, dude, this guy also has been in the pinnacle of the career, and he's having fun, yeah. right? Like, it's, it's like, I, I don't know if you've ever been on a golf course, but... Uh, yes, yeah. it's, it's literally ribbing each other 24-7, 365. Yeah, when you're on a golf course and there's four of you putting and the guy furthest out putts and he's still eight foot short, someone always yells, pull your skirt up, bro. What are you right. doing? Right. Like, hey, Hit it Alice. with your purse. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's just like it's the construction industry too. Yeah. People don't understand that. You walk by a framing crew, I mean, they are just on each other all the time. And you know why? Because all of us guys are full of testosterone, especially that are competitive, yeah. especially that work in the construction industry, especially are at the the pinnacle of their, like, at the pinnacle of their uh, expertise. Right. Those guys are loaded. And you know what? None of us are offended when, when Mitch yells at me, hey, dude, pull up your skirt. What are you doing? Hey, Sally, yeah. maybe you should get a, a better club next time. I'll tell you, I, I'm going to keep I some laugh. tampons in my golf bag next time. I'll tell I you laugh. That. You know why? Because it's funny. Yeah. I just, I hate, just, this is the exact same thing we just talked about. Everyone looks for something to be offended by all the time. Yeah. You know what? Maybe the guys are having a good time. Yeah. Maybe they're, and I shouldn't say guys because I don't know. I guess I can say who she is. She won't care. Uh, this friend of mine, Jamie Hauser, she's gay, okay? Married to a woman, don't care. We're good buddies. When her and I are out on the job, or we're out on the job together, she busted me 10 times harder than I ever busted her. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's not just guys. Yeah. It's, and you know what? It's okay. Yeah. It's all right. It's, it's completely fine. You yep. know, I'm not offended by it. And like Tiger Woods had to issue a statement on this and all this crap. But See, and is, I he, would, is he I'd actually never remorseful? Done that. Probably no. not. Well, in, in so I never would. I he's never not, would say I'm sorry. I'd be he's like, not stop issuing being a, baby. a statement because he's sorry. He's issuing a statement probably to help his image with his sponsors and you know all of that kind of stuff. Well, that's my point though. So, if I'm him and I'm worth eighty billion dollars or whatever he's worth, I'm just saying to my sponsors, hey. This you know, woke culture bullshit that everyone has to apologize for everything or this happens or this, I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'm making a stand and we're going to sell more shit because of it. Yeah. That's what he should be doing. That's like, what, Nike is one of his sponsors? Yeah. Like I could... <laughs> but one they, of the most woke. But they uh, they don't make good clubs anymore. Nope. So they quit making clubs altogether. So he's just his clothing sponsor. I think he's made enough. He probably doesn't care. He's probably no. like, you know what? Fuck these people. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, you got to have fun. You got to uh, It's just keep it's, the sport, right? Yeah. Keep the competition alive. Cause you I just, just don't get it, man. Because you just know on the line, especially in football, like there's things that those oh, players, man. that you have never, never. I, I, I'm willing to bet that there's tons of mic'd, you know, they have mic up players. Oh, dude, the well, edits. We, we can't, we got to <laughs> Oh, God, yeah. Part out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. And they know. The thing <laughs> is, what, what sucks is like everyone knows it it's like it's kind of bs but like we still play by the sort of like rules of like oh we got to be polite i'm like well and that's like what know? mitch was just talking about uh, it's a select few yeah. that are going out there blowing their horn trying to get attention well and stop and especially stop. when you're selling advertisements on your site and the more clicks you get on your site the more ad money you make you you're obviously right. not making stories based off of your <clears> opinion now you, you have bias to make stories based off of what's going to get the most clicks. 
So they're literally, all they're doing is selling clicks. They don't even care what they write about anymore. They just want to sell clicks yeah. so that they can make ads. That's, that's how a lot of this stuff evolves. And same thing on social media, right? Like people yeah. want internet clout, so I'm going to choose to be offended about something. So, yeah, uh, it's crap. Topic two, always do great work. Uh, so this uh, topic spawned from um, some work that I did about eight years ago. No, no, sorry, 11 years ago. Um, so I was involved in a program 11 years ago with some local municipalities where they were trying to reduce the amount of groundwater and rainwater that was getting into their sewer system. And so at the company I worked for at the time, obviously we had not started our company yet, um, at the company I worked for at the time, I kind of spearheaded some of the programs there where we were a liaison between the local sewer municipalities, municipalities and homeowners. And we were going into homeowners homes and installing sump pumps in their homes. And um, we started out with a small program called a pilot program where it was like a test program to see how effective this would be. Uh, the test results came back that it was very effective, and so we moved forward with some very formal programs. And I did that program with them for like, I don't know, three years maybe. Um, and then I ended up leaving that company. And um, over those three or four years that we were doing that program, we always did amazing work. Like we always did the best work we could. And we were trying to make the program happy, we were trying to make the customers happy and everything. Well. Two weeks ago, I get a call out of the blue, eh, maybe three weeks ago, uh, I get a call out of the blue and uh, they actually called into our main office and I, I got to hand it to our girls that answer the phones in our office because when you own a business, <clears throat> everyone, a whole bunch of salesmen find out who's the business owner and they'll call into that business, that main business phone and they'll act like they know the owner. And so your girls that answer the phones or guys or whatever, they like half of their job is shielding all the sales calls from ownership. And so they do an amazing job at it, both my wife and uh, Stephanie, the other girl that answers our phones. And so this guy calls in and, and his name's Ron and he says, hey, I'm, I'm looking to speak with Mitch. And they said, oh, well, what's this going? You know, what's this concerning? I can take a message. Well, I'd just really like to talk with him. Well, I I'd, I'd just really need to take a message. He's not available at this phone. Well, can you have him call Ron? And he leaves his number and everything. And she says, well, what this con what's this concerning? And Oh, he'll know. He and I go way back. And so <laughs> I get, and, and that's what they all say. Yeah, that's what they all say. And so most of the time. I try I, to call him. Like, well, yeah, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> well, most of the time I'm like, I don't even know who the hell this person is. Yeah. Right. And, and then uh, mm -hmm. uh, we're all, most of the listeners of this show are in the home services industry. Uh, half of the time, they're a sales rep for Angie's Leads. Oh, and or vomit. home advisor or Yelp vomit and, and they're trying to give us work right? yeah and so I just chew them out on the phone I'm like uh, <laughs> let, let me your get your program's a joke just let me tell you that right now no I'll tell them flat out I'm like uh, you literally started our relationship by lying to my customer service agent that you and I go way back like that's not the yeah. way to start a relationship why would with I me. trust you you just lost my business forever yeah not that they ever had it anyway no but anyway so um uh, I get a text, like they always just text me the name and number and say, hey, you're <clears> supposed <throat> to call this guy, but then they'll usually kind of color it up a little bit, right? Of course. And so she says, hey, some guy named Ron Tholman says he he knows you and you go way back and says that he wants you to call him and he wouldn't even say what it's about. And I'm like, what's his number? And, she, <laughs> and she's like, uh, here's his number and he, apparently... He knows you. And I'm like, yeah, what's his number? Like, like, yeah, like, I know that name. And that's a, that's a number we want to call back for sure. Yeah. And so I call the guy back and, uh, they're <clears throat> firing up this sump pump program again. And, um, they, um, they, they were requesting. So, so I'm not in that, that business circle anymore. Um, that's kind of over on the Kansas side of the state line. We're on the Missouri side of the state line. So I don't get a lot of the hubbub over there. Yeah. And so he said, we're firing. And up a this. lot of it is hubbub over there. Yeah. Uh, he said, we're firing up this program again. And um, we've noticed you haven't signed up for it. And we'd really like you to sign up for it. And so I said, okay. Uh, is there a sign on bonus? <laughs> no, there's not that. But they <laughs> have like a pre-meeting. Like it's, it's, it's called an RFP, a request for proposal that they're, that they're signing up for. So, um, we have like a pre-meeting for this. And, and so he says, we got a pre-meeting coming up in a couple of days. 
love for you to be there. So I go there. And of course, I'm seeing all these old faces that I used to see that are members of the program, right? They're big wigs with the county and big wigs with the engineering firms that help write everything and, and all of this stuff. And then the, the whole <clears> meeting <throat> is for all of the plumbers that are planning on bidding on this program. And I, I don't recognize hardly any of the other plumbers in this room. And I'm like, this is weird. And so I kind of stay quiet and, and just let the meeting go through its course and everything else. And and they're going, th they're going through all the rules of the program and listing all the repairs that have to be done and, and all of this stuff. And uh, there's always the one guy that asks a million questions. And it's like you're basically exposing yourself to everybody in here that they don't want you in the program. Yeah, you're going to be a, you're going to be trouble. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a problem. You're a problem. You're right? a shit starter. So <laughs> I stayed super quiet through the whole thing. Uh, I think I cracked one joke the whole time, but that was it. And a meeting gets over and <clears> all the plumbers <throat> kind of file out and leave. And so I'm, I take the opportunity. I'm already there to kind of catch up and say hi to all these old faces. And, and so I, I go say hi to Ron and I'm like, Hey, I've noticed nobody in here was like, I don't recognize anybody in here. He goes, yeah, you know, like it, isn't that interesting? He's like, none of the other plumbers that were in this program before are here except for you. And, and I said, well, I, like, who are these other plumbers? And he goes, let's just say there's a reason I called you. <laughs> he so knew he was signed up. <laughs> they, they don't, they don't have trust or a high level of trust with these other plumbers. Right. Yeah. And, and, I and don't it's wanna, not to say they're not good, but it's, right. experience and relationships right. one on one. And I don't know who these other plumbers are. So like, I, I don't have a bad thing to say about them. Um, it's just with this program, there's a whole lot of ins and outs. There's a whole lot of like learning curve that you have to do. And so they were wanting somebody to get into the program that has some experience, can, like hit the ground running. Right. And so, um, I talked with several other people and they all kind of reverberated the same thing. Well, today I submitted a bid for the contract for this program and it's a fucking huge bit. Like, uh, we, we can't, we won't get access to all of the work. They have to write us a contract for the entire scope of the program, but they will divvy up the, the work between several plumbers. Um, it's huge, like astronomical huge. And so all of this was because years ago, 11 years ago, we did great work. And in fact, in the program, they're showing slides of the kinds of repairs that need to be done. And I shit you not put a hand on the Bible if I have to every single photo of a completed repair that they showed in that slide was my installation from 11 years ago at the company I used to work at <laughs> like our installation I can't tell if sets that's the bar for the quality I can't tell if that's good or sad no it's good I mean it's good obviously we but sad damn good work but sad that in 11 years like there oh, weren't some newer they photos. Harvested new photos that's what I'm saying right? they haven't harvested new photos or the work was so shitty I mean they didn't take photos when you're the goat you're the goat you just can't okay <laughs> this is why Mitch got crushed earlier it's Austin deep. I mean you know and Mitch brings that up because especially in the early episodes you know we talk about um, when you're getting off the ground, word of mouth advertising is the most important thing you can do. It can screw you very early, make you very early, especially if you're a one-man shop like I was. Yeah. You're not running a ton of calls. If you go out on 10 calls and one of them's crap, now 10% of your work has been shit. Yeah. Okay. And that one person tells five people that, oh, I, yeah, I wouldn't call that person because negativity sticks more than positivity, yep. right? And then those five people tell two people each. It's a reverse snowball that you don't want to get into. Yeah. But when you do good work every time and people trust you, they refer you. That is free advertisement. That's You do not have to advertise if you're a one-man show if you do good work, it's extremely important. Yeah. Just like Mitch says, 11 years ago, I still have people call me like I, Hey man, I know it's been eight years. Haven't heard from you. Would, would you be interested in doing a new house? Right? No. Right. I'm, no, no, I don't do new home. 
But when I started out, this is before I went out on my own, I did new homes. Yep. I went in, I sized the house, I went to the shop, I built the duck myself, I went out and installed it. Okay, those jobs are perfect. No one has a problem heating and cooling their house and it's efficient and they've never had issues other than, than equipment issues. Right. People still call me to this day. I haven't done a new house in five years. Right. You know, just... But it was because the work was great. Their experience was great. The way I handled it was great. Yeah. When you're the goat, people call you <laughs> oh, <shit>. five years <laughs> down now the it's road. Deep. I, I just, like Mitch said, we, nothing outweighs good performance. That's it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And good customer experience. Nothing you do. You can advertise out the ass. These huge companies that are in their area, like, I'm not going to say, like, who Mitch used to, they advertise and spend millions of dollars advertising, and they have so much work that half of their, they have to hire just guys off the street to go run calls, and then they lose those calls immediately. But then they have to spend more advertising, because guess what? They just lost three customers yeah. based off of one call. Yeah. Do good work. Yeah. Have good relationships with your customers. Treat them like they are your number one priority when you're at their house. Yeah. When you're when you're just starting out, you are earning new customers every day by the quality of work that you're doing. And so you have two options when you're newly into business. You can either earn new customers or you can buy new customers. Um, earning new customers costs you nothing. Buying new customers is insanely expensive. Very expensive. So which would you rather do? Well, you'd rather get new customers for free. Well, all you have to do is do amazing work and treat your customers awesome and you're you're done. Like that's that's it's literally that simple. Um, you were mentioning that um, uh, upset customers will tell five people. So I, I see the opposite of that also true. So like. Yeah, uh, if you if you make somebody mad, five people are going to know that you made them mad. However, if you do amazing work for five people, um, people people are expecting amazing work. That's their expectation. And so yeah. when you do amazing work for five people, now maybe only one of those five will tell somebody else. So it's it's an inverse thing. So yeah, that's you, what I was saying. You have to know going in that just because you do amazing work, not every single one of those is going to brag about you to their friends, but you have to treat every single customer as if it's your goal to solve their problem and do it so well that they brag about you to two of their friends. And that's what makes it so important is because it's trained it's trained against you. Yeah. So it's that much more important that you do that. Yeah. Because if you don't, that one negative thing that happens yeah can blossom into i mean it's just like you know real life stuff yeah you know people want to hear drama they want to hear how something got screwed up they want to hear how this devastation happened yeah it, it and it just it flowers into something that you don't want to have to deal with well and, and just like on our first topic people are itching at something to get offended by or to get upset by and they're itching to go to social media and and bitch about it, right? Yeah. And so if you scorn one customer by either doing crappy work or taking advantage of them, selling them something they don't need or don't want, um, or you don't handle, like you deal with enough customers, you're going to get into a sticky situation. It doesn't mean you did anything wrong to do it. Sometimes shit just happens, right? Yeah. Um, I was at a customer's house not too long ago, like last summer. Uh, I think Austin was with me on the call maybe. And we were doing some plumbing repairs and I went to move. I had to move some stuff in their basement to get to where I needed to get oh, to. I remember that. And I went to move this piece of glass. And I, I shit you not, I pick the glass up and it's a big, thick, like tabletop glass, like half inch thick. I pick the tabletop glass up and I very gently move it over and set it back down. Never dropped it, never nothing. It must have sat on some tiny pebble or something. The moment I let it down, the thing broke into two pieces, one in each hand. Oh. And, like, I could set that down, try to hide it or whatever, but instead I went straight up. Like, I stopped what I was doing. 
I went straight upstairs and I said, ma'am, I don't know what happened. I went to move this. I'm really sorry. I didn't drop it. I didn't do it. Just broke. But if I need to get you a new one, I will. Like, I just went full opposite the other direction. You know what she said? What? She said, I don't even know what that goes to anymore. <laughs> She's like, just throw it away. Right now. I guarantee you, had I hid that. Yeah, she would have been offended that you tried to hide been, something. She would have been furious that I broke something and tried to hide it. Yeah. But instead of being honest. it was a piece of garbage. Yeah. Right? So that's the power of like doing the right thing. Yeah. So always do great work. Always treat your customers with the utmost respect. And even when you have a customer that you know is trying to take advantage of you, still handle it delicately and just back out accordingly. Yeah, still try to make your money because that's what you're really... People forget, and I used to forget this too, your number one job, especially when I was young, I was pretty hothead, right? Yeah. Mitch knows. Um, your number one job is to make money yeah. and to support your family. Yeah. That's your number one job. Everything else has to take a back seat. And it took me just personal accountability. It took me a long time to realize that. Yeah. You know, I mean, not to realize it, but to just accept it and to figure out a way to just say, you know what? It's fine. I'll deal with it, you know, on my own later. I'll put this false front. On. And that's what it is. Yeah. Let's not bullshit around. It's a false front. Yeah. Okay. You're putting on an actor's face and going, I'm just going to deal with this because I know it's going to be better for me later. Yeah. You know, you may have to have an extra beer later or you may have to, you know, spend 10 more minutes in the hot tub trying to quit. You just, you have to just be able to fake your way out of it yep. and do the right thing. Not necessarily the right thing, but what they think is the right thing to save yourself down the road. And it could be five years down the road. Yeah. Six years that someone calls you and says, hey, I heard from this person who you hate now because you had to pretend you liked doing their work. Right. But it paid off. Like You just never know when that stuff's going to come around. Right. You never know. And and it's not like you're having to saw your hand off to make these people happy. No. It's, it's when sticky stuff arises, you take the high road and you handle it accordingly. I've got a, I've got a buddy of mine that has a couple of vinyl wrapping shops down in Florida. Um, and he literally just posted today that he was doing a clear vinyl paint protection film on this Porsche SUV. And uh, the customer was not happy at all. The guy does amazing work. The customer was not happy at all. And he was pretty sure the customer was trying to get free wrap, uh, free wrap or heavily discounted. Right. And so he says, I, I'll give you two options. Option one is I'll give you a 5% discount and you keep it as is, which he knew the guy was not going to take. Yeah. Option two is I give you a 100% refund. And the guy says, all right, option two it is. And he says, okay, pull your car in and we'll remove every bit of wrap we put on it. And I will give you a 100% refund. And so now the guy's like, uh, 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 yeah. uh okay. And so he didn't want to do this. No. But... He's his number one goal is to make money, right? Yeah. And so your number one goal. He you know, for whatever reason, the guy was unsatisfied with the quality of the rap, and so they pulled it back in the shop and here he has got pictures on social media today of them heat gun and pulling this clear wrap right off the car. Yep. And you know, it sucks. They it was special order wrap because it's an extra size, like an oversized hood, so it's wider yeah. and all of this stuff, but he was like, That's you just gotta do that sometimes to to yeah. make people happy and so did he word it like that on purpose where he's like i'll give you 100 percent refund and wait for the guy to go okay yeah probably I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sure so but ultimately that's when you've done enough work and you start having to kind of refund people money your refunds are kind of based off of like what is the desired outcome and sometimes if i'm refunding customers money my desired outcome is i hope they never call me again but mm -hmm. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to hope they never call me again, like so bad that they badmouth me. Mm -hmm. But I hope to make this uncomfortable enough. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want them bothering me or my other plumbers, you know, anymore. So I, I'm going to make it 
pleasant enough that they leave satisfied, but unpleasant enough that they won't call our, our company the next time they need service. So um, it's, it's just kind of a balancing act when you get to that point. So, mm-hmm. um, But essentially, always do amazing work, and you won't have a problem finding work in the future. That's right. So option three, or uh, topic three. Get it together, Mitch. <laughs> Wanting to quit. So... Uh, I post a fair amount on my social media about uh, my dedication to going to the gym every day and uh, physically being physically fit and all of this kind of stuff. And it dawned on me the other day that people probably think I enjoy that. And I don't. Like, literally going to the gym is like the worst part of my day every day. <laughs> every day, I want to quit being physically fit before I walk into the worst that part of my day every day is just waking up. Well, I so just like this wake morning, up, I'm hungover. Like, well, I even when I'm not hungover, <laughs> I still when I wake up, yeah, I feel hungover. Like I'm just. That's because you're 40. I think so too. <laughs> like I just I lay there like Brad Pitt in uh, Ocean's Eleven. He's yeah. like, "What are you suicidal? Only in the Only mornings. In the mornings. Yeah, that's me. I wake up and just like, man, you're like Deadpool. It's like a maximum yes. effort. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I just. I, so oh, like this crazy, morning, crazy. my alarm now, for all fairness, my alarm is set too early. Uh, my alarm goes off at 430. The gym didn't even open till five. So I don't know why I have my alarm set that early, but time out. If my spouse's alarm went off at 430, there'd be a bloody body. <laughs> and then, I mean, if I'm laying there and I'm dead asleep and an alarm goes <laughs> off and I look over and it says 430, someone's getting stabbed. I mean, immediately. <laughs> you know, what's funny. So Mitch's wife is a redhead and she's out there. Like she's a little nuts anyway. And she loves to sleep and she loves to relax. Yep. I don't know how she hasn't killed you. Well, it's easy. She's I get up and go to the gym and she gets the best sleep ever because I'm not there. <laughs> yeah. She finally. So, <laughs> finally. Get this stinking of, motherfucker out of the bed. Yeah. Three <laughs> minutes of getting me out of bed is enough for her to get a couple of hours of uninterrupted sleep, right? So Interesting theory. Yeah. Uh, so like this morning, my alarm goes off. And I just lay there and I lay there and I, I, for 40 fucking minutes, I lay there and I'm like talking myself into going to the gym. And now the gym's been open for 10 minutes. You're so fat. And, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, now it's even oh, like I'm running late now. Is it even worth it? Like, well, uh, you know, and so finally I'm like, nope, fuck it. I got to do it. So I get up out of bed. Danielle rolls over. I was just getting ready to snuggle you. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) Now I'm back in bed. (laughs) You know. It's because you waited so long. I know. (laughs) I know. You know you're sleeping in whenever, like, Danielle wakes up. (laughs) That's just what happens. If you're married and you wake up and you think you're going somewhere. My my problem is hunting season. Yeah. Like, when it's bow season and it's cold out and that I hate morning hunts anyway you gotta walk out in the woods it's cold the sun's not up you don't see any, it's early you know I'm not a morning person anyway but man when it's cold out and you wake up and that warm body's next to you and you're like man you know what you know what would be nice you, you start I, rationalizing yeah you're like that deer's probably not even there anywhere he's probably on the exactly. other side of the field exactly the, you the, know the wind the wind's wrong today he'll, yeah the wind's <laughs> wrong he'll be there in the in the evening, oh, you know what? I'll go out early in the evening, yeah. and maybe I'll catch him in, during the day. Yeah. yeah, you're right. That's exactly what happened, man. Mm. In the mornings, ugh. Yep. Ugh. So, so like this morning, um, I did I did two workouts Sunday, I did two workouts Monday, and I did two workouts Tuesday. So you got too much time. Two workouts a day. I mean, I don't I'm, work out at I'm, all. I'm effective with my time. But do but do anyway. I, you got too much time. <laughs> so so that's part of the rationalization I'm doing. I'm like I've already done six workouts this week, and it's only Wednesday. Yeah, like I could skip. Yeah, but that that's that moment right there. Mm-hmm. That's the moment, and so. And that's not necessarily wanting to quit. That's just wanting to not get started. Yeah, you know well, that's. The, that's the easiest way to quit, right? Yeah. <laughs> the easiest way to get started. Way to, yeah, that's make it exactly it, like, right. Like, it'll make it harder because the next day you're like, well, I mean, I didn't go yesterday, so maybe I just, maybe this is just a little little break, and then it's like day three and day four. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I have, I struggle with this all the time, like, work-wise. It would be so much easier to get a job, a full-time job, 
working at Bass Pro Shop. Like, I've put my time in. Yeah. You know what I mean? We've set ourselves up to be okay. I could... It would be so much easier to just go do that. Yeah. Like, that's my struggle. The, I want to quit fucking around with this, all this other stuff all the time. Right. Like, I... I think about it with this. Yeah. Like, man, I got to go go over to Mitch's and I, you know, it's not, and it's not that I don't like doing it. It's just that there's always a lot on my plate yeah. and it would be easier if there was one less thing here or one less thing there. Yep. You know, I could just go work for this people. You know what? I could sell my house. I could make a ton of money. I could buy another house for cash and I could retire three years earlier than my plan. Mm -hmm. That would also be the easy way out. Right. That would also be quitting on, on the goal and the trajectory that I've set myself up for. Right. Right. And I think about it all. I'm, I'm not shitting you guys every day or every other day. Yeah. I'm like, man, you know what would be really easy right now? It's just sell that fucking house, move somewhere warm, get a regular job. Janine wouldn't have to work. It, it would be extremely easy. Yeah. But if guys like us and other guys that listen to this show, if you do that, you're quitting. Yeah. Okay. That is what is the difference between people that are successful and people that are failures. They may, they may take off and they may be rolling to something really great and then they quit. Yep. And their success that they already worked for has gone from success to failure and they already did the hard part. Yeah. Like that's what keeps me going is I've already done the hard part. All I got to do is keep the train rolling. Yep. You know, and that mental battle that you can overcome with yourself to keep going is what separates winners from losers. Yep. You know what it's, I mean? So discipline and success is not difficult. It's just easier not to do it. Oh, yeah. So that's ultimately what keeps people from being successful. Like everyone's seen the meme where you've got one guy that was digging towards the diamonds and he's already given up and he's turned around and walking the other way and he was like an inch from the diamonds. Yeah. And then you've got another guy that's feverishly digging in that direction because he's not going to give up. And I mean the meme has some merit, right? The, 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 the problem that I have with that meme is it acts like you, you don't know that that one next step might be the biggest step of your life type of thing. However, let's just say like it, it, I, 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 we started this by referencing how much I want to quit the gym. There's a lot of things I want to quit, right? Just for the same thing that you did, like quit, sell it all, start over. You yeah. know, refresh, right? Uh, I, people are naturally on a two-year cycle that want to do that anyway. Um, yeah, they say two to four-year cycle. Yeah. So, like, you, you go to a job, it's all great for your first year, and then by about year two, you're like, well, I don't know. Like, maybe, yeah. maybe not, right? By three, so, you're thinking about quitting, and by four, you're thinking about going in there and killing everybody. Right. So, like, let's just say that this fear of wanting to quit or this idea of wanting to quit fired up with me and on my plumbing company. Well, what if I wanted to quit and I folded everything up literally two days before that guy calls and says, Hey, we want you to bid on this enormous project. Right. Right. I was an inch away from the diamonds. So, uh, unfortunately life doesn't have enough examples where you were just one more piece of effort away from like ultra <clears throat> success. Well, you don't know. But you never because know. Because you've either quit right. and didn't find out or were planning to move past that anyway well, when and, it came through. And a lot of times, too, it's never one thing that results in ultra success. It's a culmination of, of a lot of things, right? So that's what that's what makes it really, really difficult. But um, And we talk about, I don't want to interrupt you, but we talk about that on this show specifically is all of these success stories and you see this person's got a million dollars here and this and that, that's not the way that most of us are going to get to success. Right. We have to put the hard work in. You have to stay on track. Yeah. Okay. And it's very difficult to, to give up. Yeah. But you have to just keep moving forward and sticking to the plan all the time. Right. Right. Because that's for the average, I'm for the average guy like us or girl like us that's the 
most realistic way that you are going to be successful is to do it the hard way. Yeah. The, the one common denominator amongst everybody in the world that's ever been successful is they didn't quit. Right. That's the only thing in common. So some people got there by one avenue. Some people got there by another avenue. Some people got there by lying and cheating and stealing, but they didn't quit. They didn't give up at it. Right. So, um, I mean, shit, uh, on a, I saw on a Facebook page the other day, some guy was like scrapping a water heater and he had it in between his feet on a scooter, like sideways. <laughs> like, it, like if you leaned the scooter too far, it was going to hit the ground. And got to make that money. The, baby. the first thing that popped into my head is like that guy's hustling harder than a whole lot of people out here right now. Yeah. A whole lot of people out here have Making gotten a lot just, less. Enough, just enough cushion that they feel like they want to quit. That guy ain't quitting. Like, have you ever heard a crackhead wake up and say, ah, I don't need crack that bad today. I think I'm just not going to go out there and do, yeah. whatever, do whatever it is I do to get my money for crack. Yeah. No, they always find a way, right? Yeah. So, like, one of the things that drives me is I never want to get out of hustled by a crackhead. <laughs> it, it sounds silly. Dude, next t-shirts we have made up. <laughs> I don't want to get out hustled by a crackhead. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of like the, the hammer on the rock thing. It's like... You hit a rock with a hammer one time, it doesn't break. Second or third time, you hit it a hundred times, it finally breaks. Was it the 59th time you hit it, or the third time you hit it, or the hundredth time? Yeah. 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 Simon not, Simon Sinek talks about that, where you go to the gym and you work out and you go home and look in the mirror and you don't see any change. And you go home, go to the gym and the next day and you work out and you, you check your fitness and you don't see any difference, right? And he says, you know, I don't know, I don't know the exact day. But I do know that if you go do that every single day, mm -hmm. you'll change. <clears throat> yeah, that's it's, why... It, it's just change happens slowly. It, nose to the grindstone's a real thing. Yeah. I mean, um, it, it literally is. You keep your eye on your work, and you keep after it, and then the next time you pick your head up and look around, shit's different. Yeah. You have done something. You have something to show for it. Does that mean there's not going to be hard days? Of course not. Right. There's going to be hard days. How you handle those hard days, those hard situations, and how you handle yourself specifically, I mean, let's be honest. A lot of this stuff is, is how you mentally prepare and how you mentally overcome challenges to be successful. Yeah. And how you... Greatness doesn't have to be winning the Super Bowl. Greatness can be getting up out of bed when it's day eight of a work shift at a hospital. Yeah. That can be greatness. Yeah. Okay? Don't sell yourself short for overcoming the challenges that are in front of you and just get after it and stay the course. Yeah. Uh, Tony Robbins says it best in that. He says that people underestimate what they can do, or I'm sorry, people overestimate what they can do in a year, but they underestimate what they can do in 10 years. And because of that, it opens the door to get really discouraged. And so they overestimate what they can do in a year. In other words, they think I can do this in a year. And when it doesn't happen, now they're discouraged. However, they way underestimated what they could have done in 10 years. So let's just use round numbers. <clears throat> if I thought I could have a million dollar company in a year and a $10 million company in 10 years, well, if year one, we had a $700,000 company and I got discouraged and folded up shop, right? Well, little did I know I was at a $700,000 company in year one. I was on the trajectory to have a $20 million company in year 10. Yeah. If you're just growing at 7% every year. Right. Mm -hmm. So... You, you could easily compound that, right? And so yeah. because we overestimate what we can do in a year and we underestimate what we can do in 10, it opens the door to get heavily discouraged when things don't go to our way. And the one key to success is giving it your all on the days where you don't want to be there. The gym was the last place I wanted to be this morning. Fuck, my, my social media post this morning was something about well, here, let me find it. You know, while you're looking for that, it, it, it's funny you say that. So my daughter loves Alex Morgan, right? She has an Alex Morgan poster in her room. And it, and it, I can't remember exactly what the slogan says, but it says, always be working hard even when no one's watching. Yep. You know? Yeah. There's not going to be, no one's going to be cheering for you or for her just when she's practicing kicking goals. Yeah. But when she scores two in a World Cup, guess what? Right. 
you know no one's going to cheer for mitch when he is day one out of the company starting and is if he really was honest with himself scared to fucking death that he was going to fall on his face no one's cheering right the only the only person in your corner right then is you and maybe your spouse right and that's it I mean, you you are on your own, and you are the only one that can decide if you're gonna be successful or not. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, if you want to beta test that, go post a uh, go make a social media post about you buying a new car, and it'll get five times the reactions of a social media post where you've overcome a small struggle in your business. Yeah, nobody's cheering for you when you're doing the work; they're cheering for you when you achieve the result. Right. So, yeah, this morning, my social media post, uh, we'd never amount to much if we only tried on the days we feel good. Working on the days we aren't feeling it creates success. So I, I wrote that because the gym was the last place I wanted to be this morning. And I knew that today is a test day. And if I survive today, then tomorrow will be easy that is one step closer to success. Right. Yeah. So, I, we, so no one, he never said, did you go to the gym? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. After, that, be like, yeah. after that snuggle? Full workout, too. Even though I started late, I just stayed late and got it done. Did you get a workout before you went? The people want to know. Oh, no. <laughs> no. That's, it was a fake snuggle? Well, it was a snuggle. That's, it's 5 a.m., man. <laughs> okay, first off, I thought code for snuggle was sex. Nope. So if... No, no. If, I'm out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I, no, I'm not. No. I got shit to do. <laughs> I just, no. I got... Stop. Snuggle after. You well, pay the piper first. Now I know to never snuggle Dave. You pay the <laughs> piper first, Austin. He's like, it's leg day, dang it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It is leg day. No, it was arm day today. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Oh, my so. God. Wrap it up, Mitch. All right. Good show, buddy. That's about it for the show. So uh, if you guys liked what you heard, uh, please do us a favor and share the show <laughs> with somebody else who might also be wanting to start their own business. Also, check us out on Facebook at, at Podcast The Void. Um, uh, you know, like our page, uh, comment on there, find us on Facebook. You can send us friend requests, all of that stuff. And if you have any questions that you want answered on the show, you can send us an email to ask Mitch at Mitch So until next time, guys, we will see you later. Love you guys. Peace. Peace.